Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Just um, looking at, I've been doing a lot of taping today, but I'm looking at a lot of news feeds coming in since this morning uh, where we had an earthquake in uh, a place called Lebanon, New York, or Lebanon, New Jersey. Uh, very interesting. First time in 125 years. And that's the, 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 this, the, this is two days before we have the eclipse going right through America. Uh, at the same time, President Joe Biden abandons Israel. All this happening today. Uh, I've got several things that I need to talk about, but first I want to read, front, read to you from uh, Psalm 83. O Lord God, do not remain silent. Do not turn a deaf ear. Do not stand aloft, O God. I want to pray this. I want to pray this right now. Father, we pray that you do not stand silent. We pray that you do not turn a deaf ear. We pray that you do not stand aloft, O God. See how your enemies growl, how your foes rear their heads. With cunning, they conspire against your people. They plot against those who cherish, you cherish. Come, they say, let us destroy them as a nation so that Israel's name is remembered no more. With one mind they plot together. They form an allegiance against you. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagarites, Byblos, Ammon, Amelk, Philistot, the people of Tyre, even Assyria has joined them to reinforce Lot's descendants. Do to them as you did to Midian, as you did to Sisera and Jabin at the river Kishon, who perished at Endor, and became like a dung on the ground. Make their nobles like Oreb and Zeb, all their princes like Zeba and Zalmunna, who said, let us take their possession, the pasture lands of God. Make them like the tumbleweed, oh my God, like chaff before the wind, as fire consumes the forest, or a flame sets on the mountains ablaze, sets the mountains ablaze. So pursue them with your tempest, and terrify them with your storm. Cover their faces with shame, O Lord, so that they will seek your name. May God ever, may they ever be ashamed and dismayed. May they perish in disgrace. Let them know that you, Lord Jesus Christ, whose name is the Lord, you alone are the most high over all the earth. Father, I pray this today. In the name of Jesus Christ, as a citizen of heaven, I pray, Lord, that you would have complete control over all of the earth and complete control. This government does not represent me. It does, the, the Canadian government doesn't resent, represent me at all. I am under your government, God. And so I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you would do this. Thank you, Father. Amen and amen. We have a couple of things that we're going to say here today. Um, Matt, how are you doing? Well, Pastor Rod, I'm blessed. And, you know, there is a lot going on. And, and what do we do with what we see? Now, can we assign ideas to things? Certainly. But is it very possible that we are seeing the signs of the times? I think that it is. And so we're supposed to keep our eyes in the skies. We're supposed to be awake. And so that's what we're doing. We're not panicking, but we're looking. We're being aware and with that information, we're praying and expecting. So uh, we just need to be aware and prayerfully aware. In fact, we are, and uh, that's exactly right. And a lot of people will say to me, well, you know, it's just another thing happening. Well, okay, okay, it's just another thing happening, but I don't believe that. Now, I, I'm not suggesting that anyone get excited about this. I'm just saying I am really intense on this. In the beginning, this is Genesis 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty, it was darkness, and over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the day, or the light day, and the night, and there was evening and morning, day one, day two. God said, let there be a vault between waters, and separate them from water to water. So God made the vault and separated the water from under the vault from that which is above it. And he said it was so. God called the vault sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, day two, day three. 
And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place, let the dry ground appear. And so it was. And God called the dry ground land and gathered the waters he called seas. And God said to them, it was good. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation and seed bearing plant and and the land bore seed bearing plants according to the various kinds. And the land produced vegetation and plants bearing seeds according to the trees and bearing fruit to the seeds according to their kinds. God saw that it was good. And there was evening and morning. That was day three. Now day four. Are you ready? This is verse 15. 14 and 15. And God said, let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate day from night. Let them serve as signs. The lights are to serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years. Let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights. The greater light to govern the day, the lesser light to govern the night. And he also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, to separate light from darkness. God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were day four. Let me, let me explain to you. In verse 14, let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night. Let them serve as signs. Let them serve as signs and mark sacred times and days of years. Let me explain something. On Monday, we're going to have an eclipse. An eclipse. Oh, well, that just happened. You know, they... The earth 13 billion years ago came in and they just all happened by accident. No, it didn't. God created it. It didn't happen by accident. You were not created by accident. You're not an accident. You're not an accidental creation. God has done everything according to his time. And uh, that's very important. Okay, you're asking another question. I can sense it. So then you would say, yeah, Rod, well, that's just Genesis. Okay, well, let's go to Psalms. This is a book of music, okay? Psalms is a very interesting passage. Chapter 19, verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God. The heavens declare the kador of God. They declare the glory of God, the majesty of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Not an accident. His hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out to all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. And in the heavens God pitched a tent for the sun. Listen carefully. It's like a bridegroom coming out from the chamber like a champion rejoicing to run its course. Listen carefully. It rises from one end of the heavens. You're on earth looking at this. It rises from one end of the heavens and makes the circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. God uses these things to communicate with us, to explain that something's wrong. America, something's wrong. We need to repent. We need to come back to God. And I am so ticked off right now because behind me is an Israeli flag. It's the only nation in the world that has the blessing of God on it. That nation, even though it rejected Jesus Christ, that nation, God's promise, not man's, God's promise is that he will establish it. It's his nation. He's doing it. Earlier today, I heard President Biden. I'll get to that. Let me back up. This morning, an earthquake centered between New York City and Philadelphia rattles much of the Northeast. Pedestrians across, this is news. I'm reading you news. I didn't write this. 
Pedestrians crossed the street in New York on Friday, April 5th, 2024, and an earthquake shook the densely populated New York City metropolitan area. Friday morning, the U.S. Geological Survey said, with residents across the Northeast reporting a rumbling in a region where people are unaccustomed to feeling the ground move. Unaccustomed. I talked to Kevin Bateman, and he felt it too. And he was, he was like a big, he said like a big truck went by us, and it, it shook everything. Franklin Square. He's fine. But I'm just saying. We'll talk to him next week. It says here that the U.S. Geological Survey said with residents across the North Street, re, re, Northeast reporting a rumbling in the region, an earthquake centered between New York, Philadelphia, shook skyscrapers and suburbs across the northeastern United States for several seconds. Trump Tower included. Biden's White House included. Causing no major damage, but startling millions of people in an area unaccustomed to the tremors. Listen to this. The U.S. Geological Survey reported that a quake at 1023 a.m., with a preliminary magnitude of 4.8 centered near the White House station, New Jersey. About 45 miles, or 72 kilometers, west of New York City, and about 50 miles, that's 80 kilometers, north of Philadelphia. The agency's figures indicated over 42 million felt the, the trembling. The name of the city where it was centered. The name of the city in New Jersey where it was centered is Lebanon. Lebanon. You know, it's interesting to me that in the past several years, there have been two places that have captured the attention of the, of the people uh, in America. One is, of course, uh, Palestine. Ohio. The other is Lebanon. By the way, the eclipse goes across the United States, across Palestine. And they'll see it in New Jersey, too. Not a total eclipse, but they'll see it. Let me explain something. When eclipse comes, it blocks out the sun. This is a sign in my view, this is my opinion, it's what I think, a sign of people seeing what happens when you push out God. What happens when you get rid of the Lord? We'll see it Monday. Two days before that happens, we have an earthquake centered in Lebanon, New Jersey. At the same time, it started off yesterday, President Joe Biden, during a half-hour phone call Thursday, told Israeli Prime Minister that strikes on humanitarian workers overall, the humanitarian conditions in Gaza were unacceptable, according to a statement by the White House. Now, remember that it was Gaza who struck Israel first. They were in a peace, they were in a ceasefire at that time. Gaza struck Israel, raped, killed, savaged, brutalized children and women. And the people who were there were the people who believed in peace. And they saw themselves as kind of the in-between. And the in-between were killed by the people they thought they could have peace with. Seven World Kitchen or World Central Kitchen workers, aid workers perished in an alleged Israeli missile attack earlier this week. According to a statement by the group, the group said personnel were traveling through what was supposed to be a conflict-free area when the incident occurred. Israeli Defense Force spokesman Rear Admiral Daniel Hagar uh, said Israel will investigate the matter separately. I didn't write this. He demanded that Benjamin Netanyahu 
set specific concrete and measurable steps to protect aid workers going forward. Biden also said the U.S. policy towards Israel's actions could change based on Israel's implementation of those protections. Yesterday, let me tell you what he said today. In a minute, I got to calm myself down. National Security Council spokesman John Kirby. You know, I like John. He's a good guy, but anyway. The White House expected Israel to quickly detail what steps it would implement soon. This morning, President Biden made the statement that uh, he can't support Israel any further unless they cease fire. A ceasefire for Israel means they admit to defeating or they admit to withdrawing from the war. Hamas wins. Hamas wins. We need to pray about this, and I'm, I'm very upset about this, but I'm going to let you pray, Matt, because I, I've just had it with this whole This is incredible. The United States, uh, I don't know who you are. I don't know who you are. United States of America, I have no idea who you are. You're not the, not, that's not the country I grew up in. Sorry, I don't know who you are. Canada? A? Who are you? I didn't join a country for this. Who are you, Canada? Pray, Matt. Pray for Israel. And uh, after I pray, Pastor Rod, if I, there's a small article talking about the, uh, the X that the eclipse is forming, and, and there's a verse I would like to look at, if you don't mind, after I pray. Go ahead. Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, your hand is upon, Lord, the apple of your eye. Your hand is upon Israel, Lord God. And Lord, uh, we stand with you. We stand with Israel. And Lord God, we understand that in the, the end days, they will be surrounded by their enemies, Lord. And we hate to see, Lord God, the West joining in, Lord, the possibility of being included in, the, in that group. And Lord, we just pray that we... Lord, in your eyes would be separate from them who choose, Lord God, to go against your land. Lord, pull us apart, keep us separate, Lord. As Lord, we look upon you, we love you, we love your people, Lord God, and we intercede, Lord, for Israel. We pray your hand would be upon them, Lord God, because we know no matter what man can do, Lord, you are much mightier. You see the beginning from the end. So we ask you, Lord, to move on Israel, move on your behalf for your country, Lord God. And help us, Lord God, to, by, Lord, by your Holy Spirit, to pray, Lord, pointed prayers, Lord God, for Israel, smart, wise prayers beyond ourselves, Lord God. So, Heavenly Father, we, uh, we just need your intercession. Lord, we ask you to move on leadership's hearts and minds. Lord, we ask you to quiet those Lord, who are speaking out of turn and speaking what they shouldn't be speaking, Father God. And Lord, just prove yourself to be real. Prove yourself to be mighty, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to follow your will and do your will in these days we find ourselves in, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead, Matt. What, what do you have there? Well, it's an interesting article. And again, you can apply different things to uh, different situations. But uh, this article says it's just another interesting aspect of the eclipse. It says, could it be possible that history is about to repeat itself? On April 8th, the Great American Eclipse of 2024 will complete the giant X over America that the Great American Eclipse of 2017 started. Meanwhile, the devil comet will be racing through our solar system for the first time in 71 years. Most of you already know all this, but what is not widely known is that we have seen this same pattern before. In 1811, a solar eclipse finished the X over the heartland of America that a solar eclipse in 1806 had started. And meanwhile, Tukumchi's comet was making headlines all over the nation as it raced through the heavens. Approximately three months after the giant X over America was completed, 
cataclysmic earthquakes began erupting along the New Madrid Fault. That's the end of that article. And, um, you know, I just wanted to, to highlight, we talk about Matthew 24, but we also need to take a look at uh, Matthew 21. Uh, or, I'm sorry, Luke 21. Because we know Mark 13, Luke 21, Matthew 24. Uh, they're extremely similar, but there are some differences. Um, in the end of Luke 21, it says this at verse 34, or there, verse 35. For that day will come upon everyone living on the earth. Keep alert at all times and pray that you might be strong enough to escape these coming horrors and stand before the Son of Man. And it says in the previous verse, don't let that day catch you unaware. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, look, I you know, people can say what they want to say because of our wisdom. But God is the one who controls everything. So we're not looking for destruction. I'm simply saying to America and to Canada, and I, I apologize if you're watching from Europe or you're watching from Australia. I would agree with this for Australia and for Europe and for South Africa and all of that. But the United States of America and Canada, it's time, it's time for us to repent. Do you know what bowing down means? It means get off your high horse, shut your mouth, get on your arms and knees, and pray for God's mercy because of your sin, my sin, our sin. We failed. As a nation, we failed. As a country, we failed. Has nothing to do with race, has nothing to do with any of that has everything to do with sin, S-I-N. And Father, forgive us, we have sinned. Help us, Lord, in Jesus' name, to say and do the right things. Help us to turn around, Lord. This is what we pray in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. You know, it's really important. Um, Matt said something here. His boss is an independent Baptist pastor. He went to a camp meeting this morning with the with and met two missionaries from the U.S. based on London, Ontario. Okay, <laughs> actually, that's good. He spoke during the spotlight segment. Over 60% of Canadians are lost. Actually, I would say that there's more than 60%, but anyway, that's because I've read some other statistics. Uh, secular humanist Islam Hindus make up the largest segment of the population according to the missionary numbers that he used. Uh, that's absolutely true. Um, and we are broadcasting from Canada. And we broadcast Bible Discovery from Canada. So it's a Canadian-American organization. And we pray that God sustains us and keeps us healthy and able to go forward. Um, you know, we just pray that God keeps us strong. We, we, are, we, are, we are supported by people like you. And we're supported by, that's how we do it. We don't call out any numbers or, you know, say you're going to get a billion dollars. If you, we, don't, we don't do that foolishness. We don't get into the prosperity foolishness. Uh, and all that stupid stuff. You know, I'll be honest with you. I, I just really feel it's time to get straight with everybody. Look, we're sinners. We've sinned. We've failed. You can read all about this in the, in the scriptures, in Jeremiah, in Isaiah, in the 24th chapter of Matthew, in the 25th chapter of Matthew about the parables and all that stuff. You read about this and you see it in 2 Peter. You read about this and you see it. Listen, the book of Romans, Paul writes to the book of, to the church at Rome in the Roman Empire. And that's what he says. You know, everybody's got these excuses. Well, it's this, it's, no, it's not. It's, it's not. The spirit here today, they don't die. They go where God is not. When you kick God out, other spirits come in. And that's the, now, those of us who have Jesus Christ have the Holy Spirit. And there's no way, if we trust in God, that the enemy can take us over. So praise the Lord, the Holy Spirit. But the truth is, there's not a political party that's going to solve the problem. So we've got to stop with that. Everybody's looking at the election. We've got to knock that stuff off. We have to come back to Jesus Christ. It does not matter if you're a Democrat, an Independent, or a Republican. It has no, nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with submission to Jesus Christ as Lord. That's where it's at. Okay. Uh, I wanted to uh, say a couple of things here uh, or pray about a couple of things here. The first thing is we need to pray. We've got a, 
we've got two problems that just emerged on us. And they have to do with the electrical system here. They came in yesterday and they've got major transformer problems that developed out here. <laughs> and they've got an electrical problem down here. It's, it's a whole new thing. It just happened to us. So they got to shut our electricity off. So we're not sure we're going to be here Monday, OK? We're supposed to tape on Tuesday. And so the enemy is trying to stop this, and the Holy Spirit's going to keep us. Father, in Jesus' name, we submit to your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come in and take control. Lord, we need your help. Help us to be able to continue to tape and stay on, Lord. And we pray that you would, that nothing would happen, Lord. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we learned that they will come in and shut down everything around 3 o'clock on Monday. So I don't, I don't think we're going to be able to be on the air. So I apologize for that. Electricity is going to be off all over the place here. So uh, I, we don't have an ability to be here Monday. So we won't be here Monday. However, uh, that's the time when the just so happens at 320 that the eclipse is coming through. Boy, this is so interesting, I tell you. If I had another hour, I would tell you everything that I think is going on. But nevertheless, really interesting, really interesting. Um, so I, I don't think we'll be here Monday, so we're going to pray today and all of that. And Brandon is here. Brandon, uh, but, but, but we're going to pray, roll a report before we do that. But let's go to Brandon first. Brandon, how do people give their prayer requests? Go. Hey, everyone. Uh, you can just put your prayer request in the Bible Discovery uh, prayer meeting chat or on the YouTube, on the YouTube, I sound so old, uh, on YouTube's live chat or Facebook's live chat, and I will send it off to the guys and we'll pray for it. You don't sound old. You, you if may... I say the YouTube, I sound pretty old. Yeah, well, okay, you sound, you sound old to yourself. You don't sound old to me, but you would say I'm old. So there you go. Uh, the I mean, YouTube... you took the words right out of my mouth, Dad. <laughs> I don't believe in old or new. I just believe it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, it turns out that only old people don't believe in old and new, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So, yeah, and, and you're laughing pretty good there. What do you think, Matt? Yeah, I, I'm not too far behind you. Maybe vintage. Maybe that's oh, the, the vintage. Not old, vintage. I believe in vintage uh, because vintage means you get better. See, this, this culture worships youth. Everybody worships youth, but I don't, I don't do that because I believe that the older we get, uh, we become vintage, as Matt said, vintage. And the vintage is good because that's the experience you have with the Holy Spirit. Anyway, youth is not bad. Youth is great. But uh, anyway, uh, we have a report. I want you to look at this. This is really interesting from the Global News Associates. Uh, this is Ray Craddock, or, or not Ray Craddock. Uh, this is Stan... Um, his organization. Go ahead and roll it. La vida en Leucity City, Florida, no era nada fácil para René Lebel Martínez. Crecí sin padre. Mi mamá estaba en las calles. Ella estaba metida en la santería, que es una forma de brujería. Come back. Sorry. We got the wrong one. I apologize for that. Uh, that's in Spanish. And unless you know Spanish, I had the right one. I don't know why that's the wrong one. But anyway, well, that's okay. Uh, We'll get the right one for you next time we're on. But anyway, okay. So let's go straight to our prayer request and begin to pray for the people. Uh, go ahead. What's the first prayer request? The first one comes from Diane. Prayers, please, for my friend, Gloria, who has seen a doctor and was told she will have to undergo a colonoscopy, it, uh, as it may be cancer. But the hospitals are so backed up it may go until July before she finds out anything. Okay, and this is Gloria? Yes, this is Gloria. Okay, Matt, pray for her. Father God, Lord, we lift Gloria before you, and we just pray, Lord, that she would draw close to you uh, before this test, and Lord, just cast her cares upon you, Lord God, as it's months to, months away, uh, Lord God, and uh, Lord, there's some fear that uh, there could be cancer involved, and we come against that cancer in the name of Jesus, and uh, we just pray, Father God, that... Uh, Lord, you would move and that you would be glorified in the report that Gloria gets. And we just ask you, Lord, as she seeks your face, reads your word and spends time with you, that you would give her a peace about this whole situation. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Amen. You know, Gloria, let me or let me tell you something. It's very important, Diane, that um, God is going to move and your prayer requests are being heard today. And God listens to them and he hears them. And Alicia and Diane and all of the others who are uh, have listed your prayer requests on both on YouTube and both on Facebook and on uh, actually Rumble. I'm looking at Rumble. So uh, it's really important that you understand that we talk to a Lord who is who, who is ready to hear us and he's ready for us. He's calling out to our, our names. And so when we respond to him, the Lord is going to move and it's really great. Okay, next prayer request. Go ahead, Brandon. Yes, the next one comes from uh, Alicia. Uh, praise and prayers. Caitlin's thoracic surgeon will do the procedure to stretch her esophagus. Praise God. First, he will do one more test on her esophagus. Uh, uh, meno, menometry. I don't know what that is. Sorry. Well, I guess I know what it is. It's the test on her esophagus. Uh, a tube will be put down through her nose into her esophagus for that test. Uh, we should hear back in a few weeks for the appointment times. Uh, Father, we thank you for answering the prayers and helping Alicia and helping Caitlin, Father. And we thank you, Lord, and help her with this throat, uh, the problems there. And I pray that you would touch her and visit her. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Fall on her now and give her peace and rest until this takes place. And when it takes place, heal her, Lord, completely. That's what we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Next prayer request. Go ahead. Yes, the next one is a praise report from Diane. Uh, my friend Tom that everyone prayed for uh, saw his surgeon on Tuesday and all is clear. They took everything uh, uh, everything suspicious out and he is mending very well. Praise God. Matt, praise the Lord for this. Lord, we uh, thank you for moving on Tom's behalf. We thank you for Diane who brought Tom's need before us, Lord who trust in you, Lord God. And we just want to say thank you, Lord. You are worthy of all of our praise. You are worthy of Tom's praise. And we join him in giving you praise that you richly deserve. And we ask you to preserve him for the glory of your name and his service unto you. In Jesus' name we pray and thank you. Amen. Amen. It's very good. That's excellent. Uh, and keep in mind that if you have a praise report, uh, put that down too because God continues to work. And we see that. So that's awesome. All right. Uh, and by the way, I, we had a, uh, an issue uh, with somebody and we prayed for it and God just healed her right there on, on the spot. It's very good. Uh, okay, go ahead. Next prayer request. The next one comes from Kathy, praying for wisdom and clear direction and for apartment availability. Okay. So thank you, Kathy, for this prayer request. It is excellent. So Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask for your wisdom. And we ask for your strength. We ask, Lord, that you would help us. And we pray for direction. And we pray for wisdom. Help us, Lord, to be uniquely gifted to deal in these times. You know, a lot of people, they don't pray for wisdom. But, Lord, we pray for wisdom. And we pray for direction. Wisdom and direction there. And we pray, Lord, for the ability to find a place to reside. And uh, our apartment uh, that's what we pray for. So this is what she asks, Kathy does. And so we pray for her, that you would help her and strengthen her today in the name of Jesus Christ. And we said together, amen. Remember this, uh, that God is going to answer our prayers. So we keep that in mind because there's nothing there that God is not against God's will. God wants us to live and be sustained and be able to pay the bills and he wants us to have wisdom and he wants us to have direction. So, Kathy, thank you so much for your prayer request. That's very important. Okay, next prayer request. Go ahead. The next one is a praise report from Alicia. My dentist office gave me a quote of $1,800 for upcoming dental procedures. I asked what out-of-my-pocket expenses uh, there will be after my Green Shield insurance coverage. I will only need to pay just over $300. Thank well, you, God, for the blessing. Yes, Father, we thank you. Alicia thanks you, and we all join in with her. And we thank you, Father, for helping her to sustain this and get through this. Lord, you always give us what we need to sustain ourselves. And this dental problem can be very expensive. And so, Lord, we pray that you would continue to help her and uh, all the dental stuff to go in her way and to, to get it straight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. By the way, how are you doing in Nova Scotia? I think you are, Alicia. So uh, we pray for the eastern 
coast there. That's very good. All right, next prayer request. Let's go on. The next one comes from Bobby. My prayer request is for my son Dave to find a job and son-in-law who has stage four cancer. His name is Rusty. Please okay. God heal him. Dave and Rusty are the two names we have for these people. Dave uh, has to find a job. Uh, and the son-in-law has stage four cancer, and that's Rusty. So Matt, pray for them in the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Heavenly Father, we don't know the, the state of these two men's hearts with you, Lord God. So that's our first request, Lord, wherever they are with uh, with you, we pray that, Lord, they be drawn closer to you. Father, if they don't know you, we pray, Lord, that uh, very soon, Lord, whatever path they are on that uh, does not lead to you would be interrupted, Lord, and that you would divinely draw them to you, Heavenly Father, and open their hearts and minds to you. Now, Father God, we pray for Dave, Lord, for, uh, Lord, employment for him, Lord God. We pray that you would uh, lead to just the right job, Lord, for him, Lord, that he could not only be a blessing to his employer, but, Lord, his employer could be a blessing to him as well, Lord, in more than just financially, but, Lord God, in the work environment as well, Lord God, and may he be a walking testimony. And Father God, Lord, we pray for Rusty. We pray for deliverance from this cancer. Lord, stage four cancer is, is often considered a death sentence, Lord God, but not if your hand is in it. Lord, so we ask you, Lord, to move in a mighty way. We ask, we ask, Lord God, for rescue for Rusty. Lord God, we ask, Lord, that he be drawn to you. We pray, Lord God, that you will bring people into his life in whatever form, Lord, whether it be a doctor, a nurse, Lord, a friend, whoever it may be, Lord, that will minister, Lord God, godly uh, advice, Lord, and that he would be drawn to your scriptures, Lord God. And we just pray that you would move in his life, especially now, and give him deliverance, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, remember that we, we are praying, and uh, we need to pray for a couple of things that we've seen in the last two years. Uh, we're going to stop here and pray for the 5.5 million killed in Congo. That's right, you heard me, 5.5 million. You didn't see anybody walking the streets or protesting for that, did you? Those are human lives. Father, we pray for those people. Help those people in the Congo. Touch them, Lord. They're your people. They, they need to know you, Lord. They need to understand you in Jesus' name. Amen. Then we need to pray for the 500,000 killed in Syria. That's not Israel. That's Syria itself killing each other. Father, we pray for Syria. Help them, O oh God. I pray that you would be with them, the Christians there, and help them, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. We go back to Africa. Pray for the 500,000 killed in Sudan. 500,000. Man. That's over 6.5 million so far. Father, we pray that you would be with the people in Sudan and help them. I pray in Jesus' name that this killing would stop. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 6.5 million. Now we go to 6.9 million. 400,000 killed in Yemen. What? Father, we pray for the 400,000 killed in Yemen. Nobody protested it, but we are praying for them in Yemen. They need the Lord. Touch them in Yemen, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Then we have 7.2 million because 300,000 were killed in Iraq. Father, we pray for the 300,000 killed in Iraq, that you would touch them and help them, O oh God. We ask that you would be with them and help them, Father, in Jesus' name, in Iraq to know the gospel of Jesus Christ. Get there, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Over 7.4 million people because of the 250,000 killed in Afghanistan. Lord Jesus, millions have died. Afghanistan is another place. We pray for Afghanistan that you would touch them, Lord, and help them, oh God. You know, we have six people or 10 people or 12 people here killed, and it's a major issue. One person is killed, everybody hears about it. But 
These are millions. Millions of people, Lord. I pray that you would help us to reach out to people and get them saved by telling them the gospel of Jesus Christ so that you will come into their hearts. You're right there. This must wreck your heart, Lord. We thank you, Father. Thirty thousand, thirty thousand point zero three people killed in Gaza. That's less people than all those other places. And yet that's what we hear. Protest over Gaza. Lord, we have no idea. Forgive us for being so foolish. We have no idea. Lord, the spirits are stirring us up and we're wrong. We need to come to your Holy Spirit. Teach us your way and show us your path because the truth, you hold the truth. Help us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, uh, it's important to remember that. Uh, that's from the news. Those numbers, just telling you. Next prayer request. Go ahead, Brandon. The next one comes from Dan. I have a praise report. A young lady from our church, her name is Kylie, has uh, has had two sets of chemo uh, she's been through. And even though she's lost all of her hair and a lot of her strength, on her last doctor appointment, they found no cancer. Praise God. Father, thank you so much. One person. That's a miracle of God. We thank you, Lord, for this. I pray for this young lady. It's a young lady, and you rescued her. Help her, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Next prayer request. Go ahead. The next one comes from Myra. Pray that Steve and Sandy will get married instead of living together. They are not saved. <laughs> okay, Myra, I hear you. Uh, Steve and Sandy, Matt, pray for them that God will get into their hearts and change their situation. Go ahead. Lord, uh, it's a... Uh unfortunately a sign of our times we've seen the last 50 60 years lord marriage has just been thrown lord under the bus lord there's no respect for it anymore lord god and we keep seeing it everywhere in our society and father god lord we just pray lord for a touch upon steve and sandy and we just pray lord god that you will help them lord to uh make holy lord god their relationship for you Lord, we pray, number one, that they would come to know you as Lord and Savior. Lord, individually, we pray they would come to know you as Lord and Savior. Lord, the path that they're on is not leading to you. So we ask, Heavenly Father, that you will divinely interrupt, Lord, the path that they are on, Heavenly Father. And we just pray, Lord God, that they would be drawn to you, Heavenly Father. And then, Lord, have a new relationship, Lord, uh, with each other through you, Heavenly Father, and we join, Lord, in, in lifting these two before you and ask your uh, miraculous touch upon them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Very good. Next prayer request. Go ahead. Yes. Let me scroll back up here. The next one is uh, from Cindy. Pray for a Christian uh, husband, Glenn, one large mass and two smaller on lungs and going through many, uh, many tests. Biopsy next Wednesday. Yeah, okay, pray for them, Matt. Yes, Lord God, uh, we pray for this, uh, this biopsy and this test. We just pray, Lord God, that you will move, and Lord, that you will clear, Lord, any cancer cells out of his body, and we just ask, Lord, for a miraculous touch and a miraculous move. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen, very good. We have more people watching on Rumble than we've had in a long time. And so let me just say, welcome, Rumble. It's good to see you. Uh, we're just growing the Rumble thing slowly. And uh, good to see everybody there on Rumble. And uh, I'm watching the live chat. If anybody has a prayer request, it's just there. So if you have something you want to pray for and you believe in God, uh, then put it in there and we'll, we'll pray for it. Okay, uh, next prayer request. Go ahead. Yes, the next one comes from Bruce. My meds for uh, intractable pain sp and spinal injury are not working uh, over the last couple of months. These are very powerful medications, and the dose is doubled uh, that of last year's. Please pray. 
Okay, Father, we do pray for Bruce, and we ask that you would help him with these medications. Uh, we ask your Holy Spirit to enter him and go into his body and correct anything that's wrong for this, the pain and the spinal injury that he has. Fix the spinal injury, Lord. That's what we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me tell you something, Bruce. I understand that, uh, but God, you just have to pray and ask the Lord to help you and trust in the Lord, and he will help you, and he will give you strength where you have weakness. Uh, so that's very important. Okay, go ahead, next prayer request. The next one is from Gina. I would ask that you would keep me in prayer as tomorrow is Ron's funeral, and I was asked to speak. The Lord has put it on my heart to talk about the testimony of Ron's acceptance of Jesus and the salvation message. I am somewhat concerned as talking in public is something I'm not comfortable with. Thank you. Yeah, well, you know what, Gina? I, you're, you're just, you're the great, you're a great uh person for that father i pray for gina uh give the words to her and help her not to be worried about what she says because you will take over and you will give her every word to say and everybody will hear that word so lord this is her opportunity she knows it she's going she said yes so she's gonna give you everything she's gonna give you her whole self and so father i pray that you would help her and give her great strength and wisdom that day to speak about Jesus Christ and, and how you changed Ron's life and all of that, Lord. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Gina, let me tell you, I look forward to hearing about this next week because I guarantee you uh, it will be a great testimony. Not because of you, but because of God in you. So that's excellent. Okay, next prayer request. Go ahead. Yes, the next one is from Bob. Let us pray for Ruth, a Christian sister, suffering from uh, an as-yet-undiagnosed pain in her right shoulder. The pain is excruciating, keeping her awake at night. Okay, Matt, go ahead and pray. Lord, we join with Bob, and uh, Lord, we thank you that Ruth knows you, and Lord, uh, as her brothers and sisters in Christ, we uh, lift her up before you and just ask you, Lord God, to give her relief. Heavenly Father, help her to be able to get some rest, Lord God. And uh, Lord, it can be so miserable when we can't rest because of pain. So we ask for relief and help, Lord God, in whatever form you see fit. We ask you, oh, Heavenly Father, to move on Ruth's behalf. And may she recognize your intercession for her, Lord, in Jesus' name, and give you the glory that you so richly deserve. In your name we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. Very good. Let me just uh, break in here for a second. I just got a news release uh, from Israel. Uh, it says here, Hamas has rejected Israel's proposal for a ceasefire. Biden and America, you are warned. Those who curse Israel will be cursed. Those who bless Israel will be blessed. This nation is the only nation, Genesis 15, that has the blessing of God. Next prayer request, go ahead. Yes, the next one comes from Pat. Please continue to pray for Mike, who is very ill. He's in the hospital for a few days now for a battery of tests. Yeah, Mike Father, the Lord. We, we thank you, Father, for all that you're doing with Mike. Uh, we pray that you would help him. He's very ill. And we pray, Lord, that you would go into the hospital room by the power of your Holy Spirit and begin to touch him, help his, him, his spirit and his heart to know who you are, the healer, the great one. And I pray, Lord, that you would be with him in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Very good. Next prayer request. Go ahead. Uh, the next one comes from Glenn. Please pray for my wife. We lost our daughter to suicide, and she is dealing with the grief. Yeah, Glenn, boy, that's tough. Father, we pray for Glenn and his wife. <sighs> suicide is a horrible thing. It's a demonic spirit. It really is. And I pray, Lord, that you would touch them and help them, minister to them, help them to know that you are still Lord. And you continue to sustain them and keep them well. And we pray for them, Lord, in this time. It's going to be very difficult, but help them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me just tell you something. God is the perfect judge. 
He's the perfect judge. He will decide, and let me tell you, that he will help you. Now God will help you. I don't even know what that means for you. I don't know much about your situation other than what you've told us, but he will help you. Okay, next prayer request. Go ahead. Yes, the next one comes from Doreen. I have really bad uh, tinnitus and skin cancer. Uh, I am saved. I am concerned about my family members, though. Okay, well, Doreen, we want to pray for you and your family. So pray for her and her family, Matt. Father God, Lord, we lift our sister Doreen before you, and we just pray, Lord, that uh, you will bring healing in uh, one way, shape, form, or another to her ears, Lord, that this ringing, this noise, this tinnitus would be removed in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord God, that this skin cancer would be stopped. We come against it in the name of Jesus. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And uh, we just pray that you will move and get rid of it, Lord God, as you can. You're more than capable. Lord, we, as she thinks about these family members who don't know you, Lord, we pray that uh, you will touch them. You will touch their hearts. Lord, their hearts that have been closed to you. Lord, the distractions that have distracted them from seeing and knowing you. We pray those would be removed. We pray, Lord God, that uh, Lord that they would pre be presented with the gospel soon and very soon, and their hearts would be open to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Very good. Very good. All right, next prayer request. Go ahead. The next one is from Tammy. She asks for prayers for her unsaved loved ones. Yeah, let me, let me tell you something. There, there are unsaved people in all of our families' lives. As we pray for Tammy, I would like you to pray for the unsaved people that you know and pray for Tammy. Father, we join with Tammy and we come to you. There, this is not the time to fool around. Lord, this is not the time for people to fool around. Help us to get straight with you, Lord. We have to come to you and we have to repent. So we pray for our loved ones. Help them, Lord. Uh, we don't need to get in the way. Help us not to get in the way. Um, but help us, Lord, to encourage people to meet you to come to you by knowing what Romans chapter 10 verses 8 and 9 say. By knowing that. We're going to go and read it if we have to and we're going to know what that says. And Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you would bring them to know you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Next prayer request. Go ahead. Next one is from um, Marie. Uh, please pray for my friend Gayla who has been diagnosed with liver failure. She is a believer. Okay, well, you know what's important, Gala, is for, uh, for uh, Brother Maria. We're going to pray for Gala. Matt, pray for Gala. Heavenly Father, Lord, we lift Gala before you, and we just ask you, Lord, to minister to her. Lord God, we don't know what it's going to look like in the future with her liver, but uh, we just pray she be draw close to you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we don't know if that means a, a liver transplant, Lord God, or your healing touch where you reach down and you cleanse that liver and make it like new which you were very capable of doing. We just ask you to move, move in Gala's life, dear Lord. We humbly pray and uh, we thank you, Lord God, for how you're going to do that and how we're going to hear a report from Marie in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Very good. Next prayer request. Go ahead. The next one is from Matt. Pray for those stuck in Gaza in harm's way. Yeah. They are souls that need a savior. Yeah, they do. Father, they need you in Gaza. What we should be doing is not figuring out and fighting over getting arms there. We should be praying and sending people there, Christians, to help them. Lord, we don't want to get in the way of Israel because Israel's doing what Israel thinks is best, however Israel wants to do it. But, Lord, we need to pray and help the people, and that's what we do. And we, we, your nation, Lord, is your nation, and we don't have a right to touch your nation. But, Lord, I pray for the people that they would understand that, who, that you are Jesus, Lord. And I saw this report this morning on CBN about the Christians in Lebanon and how Lebanon is very, very focused. The Christians there are focused on you, and they don't want any part of any war, but Hezbollah is using that place, and boy, it's just a mess. So, Father, I pray for those in Gaza. Help them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Next prayer request. The next one comes from Diane. Praise report and thank you for relief from the pain in my right ankle. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for that answer to prayer in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Diane, that's great, isn't it? 
That's mm -hmm. great. Excellent. Okay. Next prayer request. Go ahead. Next one comes from Pat. Pray for the third un, uh, expected child in December for my niece and her husband. This little one is an unexpected surprise. Neil and Carly are wonderful, godly parents. May they be especially blessed. Yeah, that's really great. Uh, I can, I really like that. Uh, the, the the couple knows the Lord. Neil and Carly, uh, their godly parents. Matt, pray for them. Father God, Lord, uh, we just uh, thank you that Neil and Carly uh, love you. So, Lord God, this child will be surrounded by the love of the Lord, and we just pray that that would be the case. And, Lord, we just ask you to help them in every way that they need help, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One more prayer request. Go ahead. Uh, yes, Angela says, hello, prayer for my mother's health. She, is in, she has a pain in her neck, back, and legs. Uh, and she's on pain medication. Doctor says it's age-related. Her name is Rabina. Well, Father, we pray in Jesus' name for Rabina that, first of all, that she would know you, and we pray that she would give her heart to you and love you. But we do pray for this pain in her leg and her back. Uh, she's on medication, but they say it's related to age. So they can't do much for her, but your Holy Spirit can do everything for her. So help her to see you and call on your name. And in the name of Jesus, we will join our prayers and ask you to help Angela uh, for her mother's health. In the name of Jesus Christ, this is what we pray. And we said together, amen. Thank you, Brandon. You know, Matt, it's important that over the weekend we watch what's going on between Israel and the other nations. But I'm just, I'm just at the point where this is the first time we've been here uh, in my lifetime and ever. And it's really interesting, isn't it? It really is, and you know, we, we just we need to keep our eyes open as Christians. We're not going to jump to conclusions, but we also know that the Lord does give us signs, and uh, so we just we're going to pay attention and we're going to you know keep our hands on the plow and continue to serve the Lord, and uh, you know we're expecting His return in the near future. We don't know how near, but in the near future, it's a wonderful thing. But we may see some things before that return, and we shouldn't be surprised. But we have to keep our eyes, uh, to rhyme, eyes on the prize in Jesus' name. Amen. That's good. And remember that we won't be here on Monday for that reason of the crazy power things. Just keep in mind that when that eclipse goes over, that I I'm going to leave you. I'm going to read that again. I'm just going to leave it with you because it's something to seriously consider. Um, because you need to pay attention to it. And it says this, and this is really... This is just, I'm cutting down to it here. Um, when we talk about, this is Psalm 19. I don't want Psalm 19. What I want is Genesis. Uh, so I'm going to go back to Genesis 1. I just want you to remember this because this is really important. It says here, And God said, Let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night, to let them serve as signs and mark sacred times and days and years. Let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. I want you to think about that. And then I'd like you to read Psalm 19. God is saying something. The question is what? What's he saying? And I'll tell you what he's saying. You may not agree with me. I don't care because I'm right. He's saying repent. Everybody come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Jesus Christ. Yeshua HaMashiach. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus now. We don't have time to mess around. This is time. It's time to come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Lord Jesus, we need people to come to you. Come to the Lord. Father Jesus, help us. Help the people to come to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. See you Wednesday.